friends, my name is Brian, and tonight I'm going to be making um, a very large dolly for a heavy piece of equipment, um, actually a pre-treat unit for uh, direct garment. Um, you need to spray the shirts with a starch type solution that helps the print get up on top of the fabric. And um, at any rate, and uh, I'm tempted to mount some wheels to it, and it just didn't go real well. So I'm going to build um, uh, basically a big dolly. Um, this is $15 worth of steel. Um, I'll pick up some casters from Harbor Freight or Northern Tool or eBay. Um, the steel was $15. I went to my local metal supermarket. Great folks over there in Southeast Houston. They, they um, treat me really well. They cut my material uh, for me while I wait. I, I love it. Um, you know, I do, do still go to bigger steel yards when I need lots of material. You know, that's not really what they're set up for. What these guys are set up for is I've got this one project, I need three pieces of steel. Um, and so that's what I use them for. So I need to make these 16 and an eighth. And so I'm using a scribe, which basically scratches the uh, material. And I'm going to take a second and line this thing up. Now, this is not a perfect application of a cutoff saw, but it should be pretty good. It should be really good. Now I say it's not perfect. If you want to know more about the saw stand, um, check out my other video um, where I put this together and make it work. Um, Evolution officially says they don't make a saw stand for this, but this is an Evolution saw stand, and this is an Evolution Rage 2 saw, which kicks butt. So let me put my personal protective gear on. I'm wearing a 3M mask with a respirator. And then... Um, Man, I'm just having one of those where did I set it nights. So right now, it's where did I set my hearing protection. Maybe that's it. Alright, so... Go ahead and cut this. Make sure that's locked. So that is a uh, two inch by two inch, one eighth inch wall, uh, mild steel. That's one of my pieces. And so I'm going to cheat. Well, it's not really cheating. I'm going to use one piece to replicate the other. So I'm locking them together and then I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to scribe that second piece. Take this and set this to the side. Flip this one over. And this is one of the things that having this saw up high makes it much easier to work with. I do have an issue with line of sight and not having an LED, but overall it's okay. I mean, this is a huge improvement over a bandsaw, so I can live with the little inconveniences of not having a, a line. So, there I've got my two pieces that are 16 and an eighth. I do get a little bit of sparks, but it's not really that big of a deal. I will, um, this is certainly accurate enough and clean enough to weld. Um, they are ever so slightly not the same. You know, that's probably me being careless, but this will work. 
So um, stay tuned for more of this project. I'm going to be welding this in just a few minutes. Friends, so I am continuing on this project where I cut my cross pieces and I've got some other pieces that I had cut over at Metal Supermarket. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld them up. So I've adjusted my machine and I have set this up with some magnetic holders to make sure this is square. Let's do it to it. So first things first, I want to tack this. Uh, actually, I guess first things first, I want to connect my ground clamp. I'm so used to working on a welding table and I just don't have one set up yet. to work on here so I'm going to turn my my auto set stuff down just a little bit and the reason I can tell I'm just a little bit hot is I'm blowing holes in the edge of it and I point my gun into the heavier piece because it's real easy to melt the edge of these cuts on a, on a weld like this. I used to have a hell of a time welding stuff like this, and I'm running a Millermatic 211. It's got this auto set feature, and it makes it kind of idiot proof for idiots like me that don't do welding for full time. I mean, I don't earn my living welding, and I'm not certified. I just figured it out through trial and error. Sometimes that's the best teacher. Yeah, I really need to get my gear set up for welding. I need to build a welding table. So I thought about buying one of those sort of flat tables and they sure do look nice, but you know, I'd rather have something I can beat on with a hammer and know I'm not hurting it. So I'm using these magnetic 90 degrees um, not only to stabilize this so I can tack it in place, but I'm also using it to stabilize both sides so it doesn't fall over on me while I'm working on it. And that's just, that's just how I do it. Um, different folks have different methods. And I'm using just some angle iron that I have cut as a gauge doesn't have to be completely perfect. You know, I guess it could come down a little bit. It looks like my pieces aren't. You know what the hell with it. This is a dolly, not the Dalai Lama. It'll be okay. It'll be better when it has a ground clamp on it. So the idea at the tacking stage is just to literally tack it together so it doesn't move. And then I come back and weld one side at a time.
So I'm just touching up spots that I think are a little tacky looking. So that's it. Um, at this stage, it needs to be cleaned, primed, and painted. And that's really it. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you found this entertaining. Maybe you got a good laugh. Maybe you learned something. Maybe you did a little of both. If you don't mind, please like my video. Please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of my videos. And check out my playlist. I normally organize my projects into playlists if there's multiple videos involved. And uh, I'll be doing a lot of metal fabrication over the next uh, few months as I build stuff for my screen green shop. And uh, I'm going to pursue uh, some other um, projects. Um, I have an industrial furniture project that I want to work on. So anyway, um, that's all for tonight, folks. Have a good night.